ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your League One champions, Partick Thistle! The past 12 months have been testing for all football clubs. Financial uncertainty has clouded. No fans in the stadium have provided a lack of atmosphere. And there's a general unease on what is to come in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. But no club perhaps has perhaps been affected quite as badly as Partick Thistle in Scottish football. Relegated from the Scottish Championship, despite having a game in hand over Queen of the South, two points behind them at the time of COVID-19 shutting down the Scottish Championship, Partick Thistle were relegated to League One in a fight to get back to where they went once were in the Scottish Premiership looked even tougher. Ian McCall had been brought in to guide them back to that high place in Scottish football where they'd once sat in the top six just a few seasons ago. But when they were relegated to League One amid financial uncertainty and a general unease and unhappiness with what had happened, it's been a tough year for Partick Thistle and the wounds of what has happened to them will not be healed by this title win, the SFA and SPFL banned from the title party. But with celebrations like this, it shows that joyous days are on the horizon. Club captain Ross Doherty was the one to lift the League One title and celebrations ensued at Fur Hill last Wednesday as the club celebrated its return to the Scottish Championship on the road to try and get back to where it once was in the Scottish Premiership. Ross Doherty signed at Partick Thistle under Ian McCall with the hope of getting back to the Scottish Premiership. And while they're going about it the hard way, He's hopeful that this League One title success can be the springboard to hopefully getting them back there. And oh, it's been brilliant. Uh, I think it's a wee bit gutting without the fans, of course, but um, there's been a couple who've turned up, as you've probably seen, so it's just brilliant to get, to get it done and, and finish the season, of course. It's been such a tough year for them on a day like this, when you do have some fans here, you're all able to celebrate together, it must be nice. No, it's brilliant. I think the... As you said there, there's some fans here, I just wish there was more, uh, obviously, but I think all the players and all the staff have kind of earned it over the season and the way it's went, it, it is it's very sweet. Despite the fact that it's been a great end to the season, I'm assuming you'll, you'll never want another season like it, given everything that's happened. <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's certainly been uh, one, to, one to kind of remember. Um, I think the, the way it started the season, especially for us as a team, it, it kind of wasn't good enough, but I think the, the way that we've come back uh, since the second lockdown has just been incredible. So, um, I think everybody will go and enjoy it uh, and you know, hope that hopefully you're never really in this position again. I suppose sort of overcoming adversity has really been the story of the season for the whole club really, hasn't it? No, definitely. We've, we've also used that as kind of motivation throughout the season. Uh, the manager's used it a lot in talks and whatever. So I think for anybody who kind of knows football and knows and kind of is honest with themselves, they'll, they'll, they'll know this club was kind of unfairly treated, uh, to put it lightly. How much of a motivation does that give you as the players and the manager as well? Obviously, him using it as a motivation tool. I know it's it's huge. Uh, you've got to use these wee things. You've got to try and get these wee things when you're when you're doing stuff. Uh, so. Even though it's, it's obviously been poor for the club, we've used it and obviously we've used it well. Um, when you're playing games every two or three days at the end there, you, you've got to find things to, to help you to help you along and that was one of them. Put it this way, if, if the club was to not go up this season, there'd have been huge ramifications for the club. So it's it's massive, um, even though it's, it's maybe a league below where we want to be or maybe even two leagues below where we want to be. It's it's still huge for the club and a, a brilliant day. For, I, for me, yeah, I've obviously I signed here last year. We aspirations to go to the Premier League, um, and then six months later you're in League One. Uh, so it's it, it's for me it's it's a club who should be a Premier League club, and the, the, the stature of the club, the fans. Um, so we're hoping to, to get the club back there soon as possible. He doesn't need a CV unless somebody boots him out of Partick Thistle. Ian McCall is a jag through and through, and nobody will be more pleased for his players than the man himself. 
He spoke as the title celebrations ensued at Fur Hill. And while he'll never forgive or perhaps never forget what happened to Partick Thistle before, he knows a line has to be drawn under it as the club move forward into the Scottish Championship. Very happy, yeah. It's um, it's a bit strange, isn't it, let's be honest. But, yeah, I mean, we've done the hard work and uh, the players deserve so much credit for the, the, the last 10, 12 games. They were absolutely fantastic. Not, not just playing-wise, the desire, the, the fitness, you know, from Richard, who's about 48 now, the, the younger one. So it was, it was great. I feel great. Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it, I, I think one of some of the greatest managers have said, of which I'm not one, have said that the game's not without fans, and that's been proven. I hope people realise that in the last year, that's definitely been proven. Well, I'm talking. I, I, I'm not going to go away because I'm a bit still a bit freaked out again on a plane and you know wearing a mask. So um, I'll maybe go to the mall for a few days. But no, no. Watching the, the, I'll be starting work tomorrow and actually meeting a player on Friday. So and I need to talk to all my players. So you know, it, it starts. With, no, no. I mean, it was like you, you, you lie at night and think, but I always felt once we got players back, I, I'm not sure we were going to go on a run like we did, which was astonishing, but I still felt we had a real chance. So, um, fortunately, they came through. I think that question answers itself, but the only thing I'd say about that is there's now a, there's now a line underneath it. You know, we move forward. And, uh, if we do something great next season, then the SPFL and everybody will be very welcome here. But uh, we'll never forget what happened to us. But it's time to move on and and, uh, and take, try and take this club forward a little bit together. I, I think so. We made a point today, and the things that happened deeply affected a lot of us. A party thistle man through and through, just like Ian McCall, Jerry Britton, chief executive, has seen it all at Party Thistle. He's been with the club at top six Scottish Premiership finishes, but he was also in the thick of it when they were relegated to League One last year. Speaking to the press after title celebrations in Maryhill, Jerry Britton is aiming for the Scottish Premiership. He knows Scottish Championship consolidation has to come, but the ultimate aim is the ultimate goal for part of this. Fantastic, yeah. And the sun's splitting the trees as well. It doesn't always do that in Maryhill, but it's great to see the, the players and enjoying themselves and, and taking the plaudits because their performances the last six weeks or so have been absolutely outstanding. It's obviously a bit of a strange day given the circumstances, but it's a, a case of just making the most of it. Ah, you, you've got to, for, particularly for the, for the players and the staff, because uh, titles don't come along too often in a player's career, so we just want them to, to soak it up. Uh, make the most of the, the day. Um, we've got a few supporters up in the, the canal, so hopefully, uh, as they always do, they'll give them a bit of backing and uh, the boys will enjoy the day. I suppose that trophy lift is, is just as much for them as it is for, for anyone else. Without a doubt, because they've been deprived uh, this season, like, like everybody in society, of the things that we all took for, for granted. Uh, we've got really, really staunch supporters here that, that back us through thick and thin. This season's been been no different. Um, so there's no surprise that there's a, a few of them here today to, to try and soak up the, the, the atmosphere and the, the joy in the, the players like How are your feelings contrasting today from this time last year? <laughs> no, it's just it's it's surreal when, when I think back to all that's happened. Um, in society and in this club over the last 12 months and so it's it's great to be here today and to be able to experience such a, a, a positive feeling because yeah we've been we've been through the mire as a, as a club there's been some um, it's been a, a strange situation to, to deal with but it's great to, to finish the season on a high a disappointment and that unjust that you felt last year how much of that has been a driving factor throughout this season to make sure that you get back to where you you know you belong yeah, you use any uh, any factor you can to inspire you to, to motivate you and we've got a great manager and that's one of his forties in terms of unifying groups, bringing them together. And of course you're going to use any factor uh, that you can to, to as a positive force and then um, the managers use that feeling to, to great effect. Considering what's next, what's next for the club? I mean, you're, you're back to the championship next season. I mean, this club's got ambitions, obviously, to go further than that. What sort of plans are in place and what's the expectation for next season? Yeah, I mean, the plan is ultimately we want to compete at as high a level as we can. We know what we've been in within the last uh, four or five years, so that's the ultimate aim to, 
to get back there. We're under no illusions. There's no easy league as we found this season in League One. We've been in the Championship a couple of years ago. We know how tough it is. So that'll be that's a challenge for us first and foremost. Consolidate in the Championship and then when we're in a, a, a good position to then go and challenge and um, get ourselves back into the Premiership eventually. Just when you mentioned the fans, you can hear them applauding it, it means the world to them, doesn't it? They, they deserve to be where they are and go even further. Yeah, and that's the only disappointment of the whole season is the fact that they're not here to experience this occasion, experience the, the way that the, the boys were playing because the run of games that they had, some of the, uh, the football that's been played here is as good I've seen in the past couple of years. And as you can see, the boys are enjoying their day as well. <laughs> I mean, considering where you were in the league just like a month ago, could you have envisaged this day? No, we, we spoke about it often. We were in sixth place at half time against these five, two nothing down. And if you had said to me at that point that we were going to be standing here four weeks later, I would have laughed in your face. But it's down to these players. Uh, they've been written off so many times this season and this stop start season. But um, they've really turned it around and, as I say, the level of performance and consistency has been an absolute joy to watch. You've been here a wee while. Where does this rank for you in terms of best occasions at the party this well, it's, it's right up there um, and it's even harder um, to experience tense situations when you're not actually on the field playing. It's, um, it's a lot more stressful sitting in the stand watching it. So to eventually get there, when we'd set out the goal to win the, the, the league at the start of the season, so to get there, it's just it's a, it's a fantastic season and, and for me it, it ranks right up there with, with anything that I've been involved in at the club. I think Ian said he was away to Mull, but it'll just be a couple of days off for you and then, then back at it for next season. I don't know about days off. Um, Ian, when after the Falkirk game, I said, surely, OK, we'll have a couple of days and we'll enjoy it and relax. And he was on the phone to me at nine o'clock on the Friday morning, you know, talking about budgets and, and players. So it doesn't stop. And that, that's the way we want it. I think he was on radio last night saying that he doesn't need a CV because he's going to be here until somebody puts him at the door. It must be nice for you to have somebody like that uh, leading the club on the pitch. I mean, when we brought him back here, I was his assistant manager, obviously, 10 years ago. So I know exactly what he's capable of. We brought him back here two years ago to get us out of the championship and the premiership. Um, and nothing's changed. You know, we've had a wee roundabout route to get there, but no, the, the ultimate aim is still the same. These are brighter days for Partick Thistle. The past year has been hard, it has been tough, but it does look as if this is a club back on the up again. With a decent squad of players, there will be changes in the summer as they prepare for a tougher level of football. But rest assured, Partick Thistle will be back at Scottish football's top table one day.